चंद्रजी वदन ज्वाला
Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna 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 
जयम विश्वपात परमहंस परिव्राज कचारी आस्तो तरसत शिष्यमात हिज वाइंग वे से से भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी शिल प्रभुपाद की जयम विश्वपात परमहंस परिव्राज कचारी आस्तो तरसत शिष्यमात हिज वाइंग वे भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गौ स्वामी महाराज शिल प्रभुपाद की अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की इस कंफाउंडर आचार्य शिल प्रभुपाद की नमः आचार्य शिल हरिदास ठाकुर की सत गौ स्वामी प्रभु की प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिव आशादि गौर भक्त वृंद की शिष्य राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ शम कुंद रद कुंद गिरी गोवधान की देर मोस्ट ब्यूटिफुल लोडशिप शिष्य किशोर किशोर की परम करुणा शिष्य गौर अनिता की देर मोस्ट मेरसीफुल लोडशिप श्री जगन्नाथ श्री बलदेव श्रीमती सुभद्र महारानी की श्री हरिनाम संकीर्तन जग्ञ की निताई गौर प्रेमानंदी ओ ग्लोरी सुदय सेंबो देवोतिस ओ ग्लोरी सुदय सेंबो देवोतिस ओ ग्लोरी सुदय सेंबो देवोतिस ओ ग्लोरी सुशिष्य गुरु वंशी गोरंगा You can play together. Mm. Namaste Narasingaya. Trala dala dada ine. हिरण्यकाशीपूर्वक्षमा यतो यतो यामिततो नशमा बाहे नशमा हृदये नशमा नरसिंगा मदेम सारना प्रपदे Tava karaka malavare na 
ಕಾಮೂತ ಶೃಂಗಲಿತ ಹಿರಣ್ಯ ಕಶಿಪೋತನು ಬೃಂಗ ಕೇಶವದ್ರೀತ ನರ ಹರಿ ರೂಪ ಜಯ ಜಗದೀಶ ಹರೆ ಜಯ ಜಗದೀಶ ಹರೆ ಜಯ ಜಗದೀಶ ಹರೆ ತವ ಕರ ಕಮಲ ಬರೆ ನ ಕಾಮೂತ ಶೃಂಗ ದಲಿತ ಹಿರಣ್ಯ ಕಶಿಪು ತನು ಬೃಂಗ ಕೇಶವದೇತ ನರ ಹರಿ ರೂಪ ಜಯ ಜಗದೀಶ ಹರೆ ಜಯನ ಶೃಂಗದೇವ್ ನ ಶೃಂಗದೇವ್ ನ ಶೃಂಗದೇವ್ ಜಯನ ಶೃಂಗದೇವ್ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಹ್ಲಾದ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪ್ರಹ್ಲಾದ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪ್ರಹ್ಲಾದ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಹ್ಲಾದ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಜಯ ಗೋಪಿ ಜನವ ಗಿರಿ ಬರದಾರಿ ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಯಮುನ ತೇರ ವನಚಾರಿ ಯಮುನ ತೇರ ವನಚಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಜಯ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ
जाया कुंजा बिहारे जरा दामादावा जाया कुंजा बिहारे जाया कुंजा बिहारे voice this morning was stronger, midday was weaker. I'll try. Those of you that were not with us yesterday evening or this morning, I've been speaking on a theme and I'm going to continue. And the theme is <coughs> the theme is the connection, similarity, and difference between Bodhi and Bhakti. Bhakti is the, we spoke about. Prabhupada has translated that as devotional service. Commonly, translators of the Gita or the Vedic text call bhakti as devotion, like something you feel. And it's certainly something you feel. But it's also something you do. And the, the operative part of bhakti yoga is service with piti, Purvakam, with feelings of affection and devotion for the personality. Waiting for you. Somebody have some cough drops, something in your bag. Here it comes. We need a few of these. Brown shoulder bag. One moment. Kantil for those of you from India. Okay. Devotional service is something you do and something you feel. Yep. Something you do is the service. And the mood with which you do what you do, that's the feeling of devotion. And then the object of devotion, that's Krishna. <clears throat> and Bodhi directs those activities. It directs your feelings even. Even, even in the stage of spontaneous 
devotional service, even in the stage of prema bhakti, intelligence is guiding those activities. There's a very beautiful section in a book written by Jiva Goswami where it's a long narration. <coughs> Radha, the scene opens with Radha waiting to meet Krishna. There's been an, a rendezvous arrangement. And all the gopis are assistants of Radha. They're preparing Radha in various ways to meet Krishna. And it describes their conversation with one another and Radha's feelings for Krishna, their feelings of anticipating the meeting of Radha and Krishna. Very nice. Time passes. And you know when there's an expectation, when you're waiting for a bus or for a subway train or time like takes, takes forever. So what to speak of the gopis? One moment, yugai itam yameshena. One moment seems like yugas, not just 12 years or more, yugas. So Radha then sends one of her messengers to go find where is Krishna. And the messenger meets one of the associates of Chandravali. And the associate of Chandravali says to Radha's messenger, Oh, didn't you know your Krishna is with Chandravali? So Radha is just going to have to wait too bad, like haughty. So the messenger goes back to Radha and Radha becomes man, very angry, and she leaves. And no one knows where she went. After some time, Krishna comes. And Lalita and Vishaka greet Krishna with haughty words. Basically, get out of here. It's much sweeter than that. They say it in very elegant ways, get out of here. <coughs> Krishna gives his excuses. And they say, we know what kind of person you are. Get out of here. This is the left-wing gopis. The, so, Krishna is feeling great attachment for Radha. And he's beside himself. He goes deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into the mood of feeling Intense affection in separation from Rudd. It'd be nice to have an artist make a painting of, of that. I saw a painting once that was like that. It was Krishna, one of those very old Bengali paintings that looks, the background is kind of at night and dark. And Krishna's looking into, he's by a pond or a pool by the river Jamuna and looking in. And his, his flute is by his side and his garland is by his side. And he's looking into his reflection in the lake and is very sad. Anyway, feeling separation from Radha. So Brinda becomes very concerned. She gets Purnamasi, who's 
Yogamaya personified. She arranges all of Krishna's pastimes. So Purnamasi takes some of Radha's friends to go look for Radha. And they look deep, deep in the forest. And they finally find a little cottage. And inside the cottage, alone, is Radha. I'm paraphrasing now and simplifying, but Radha is talking in madness to herself. Like, similar to Uddhava's hearing Radha in her talk of madness to the bumblebee. So she's talking to herself. Why do I get like this? I know what Krishna is, but I'm completely attached to Krishna anyway. And he's this, and he's this, and he's this. And I know he's that, and he's that, and he's that. But what can I do? I'm just attached to Krishna. And why do I go into these moods of anger, and becoming mad at Krishna? What overcomes me? It's booty. It's a very high level of booty. There's different, we discussed this Friday, different levels. Radha's level is another scale that living entities at the topmost stage of spiritual perfection will still never know. Mahabhava. <coughs> booty directs the mind when things are in proper order. Spiritual intelligence directs the mind, which in turn directs the senses to perform <clears throat> activities and devotion for Krishna. In such a way, Krishna is pleased. I started describing a little bit this afternoon, I think, um, Jagatananda Pandit, who was in the mood of Satyabhama, who would say things to Lord Chaitanya that nobody could say to Lord Chaitanya, and he'd go and pout. He'd say something very... and leave. <laughs> he loved Lord Chaitanya. So Lord Chaitanya... He wanted one time to go to, from Puri, to see the place of Lord Chaitanya's childhood pastimes. So he stayed in the house of Mother Sachi and her servant Ishan. And he heard from Mother Sachi, from the love of the mother of Nimai Pandit, all about the childhood pastimes from her perspective as mother. And he stayed there for some time, hearing from all the devotees of their love for Lord Chaitanya and their exchanges with Lord Chaitanya. He got filled up with Kora Kata. But while he was there, he also made some, with his own hand, some jars clay pots fill the sandalwood oil. And I don't know what it takes to make sandalwood oil. I know what it takes to make sandalwood paste. It's a lot of work. What to speak of sandalwood oil? Big clay pot. I don't know how big. Big. A few gallons. Or whatever. He carried it, because he didn't have trains or planes. He carried it by foot all the way back to Puri. He gave it to Lord Chaitanya's assistant, Govinda, and asked Govinda, please give it to Mahaprabhu, tell him to apply it, it's summertime, it'll help keep his body nice and cool, sandalwood oil. So Govinda gave Lord Chaitanya the good news. With his own hand, Jagannanda Pandit has made this for you. He's asked me to give it to you and have you apply it. But Chaitanya spoke strongly. And what does Jagatananda think I am? A sense gratifier? I'm in the order of sannyas. 
I can't use sandalwood oil. It's very suited for use in the temple. Give it to the deities, pujaris to use for the deity in the temple. Very nice. The next day, Jagatananda came and asked Govinda, as he used the sandalwood oil, he didn't want to say no, and he didn't want to say yes. So he just told the truth and said, Lord Chaitanya said, it's best if it's given for the deities in the temple. Right there by the side of Mahaprabhu's little residence, Kambira, he picked up the clay pot of sandalwood, smashed it to the ground, and went storming off to his room, locked the door from the inside, and fasted for days. Refused to eat, come out, anything. News came to Lord Chaitanya. Chakatananda's pouting because you wouldn't use the sandalwood oil. After some days, total fasting, Lord Chaitanya went and knocked on his door. He describes this pastime in his book, what he was feeling when he was doing this. It's amazing. Knock, knock. Jaga. I'm very hungry. I haven't eaten for days because I heard you're fasting. Could you please come cook for me? Jaga, please come out and cook for me. The door opened. Jaga was smiling. He said, you go take your midday bath. I'll prepare the cooking. Chaitanya came back. Piles and piles and piles. <coughs> and as Lord Chaitanya would eat some, Jagatananda would put more. One of those things. And you do in India sometimes. Finally, Lord Chaitanya complained. He didn't want to complain, but he had to. It's Stop. I've eaten four times what I normally eat and I can't eat any more. Please don't give me more. And then some conversation about more or not more. Then Lord Chaitanya said, I finished. Now I want to see you take your meal. And Jagananda Pandit said, I'll take my meal later. I have to feed the brahmanas. And then I'll take. So Lord Chaitanya told Govinda, you stay here, make sure he eats. You come back and report to me when he's finished his meal. And why did he do like that? Why did Radharani go off and have a fit of anger with Krishna? Her, her mind and her senses are guided by buddhi. For Krishna's pleasure. You read Jagatananda Pandit's writing, and he's over and over and over. He begins the, the, the book saying, I don't care if people understand me or don't understand me. I love Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and I'm going to describe my love for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, whether people like it or don't like it, understand or don't understand, I don't care. Then he goes on. His love for Lord Chaitanya. The title of the book is Prema Vivarta. Vivarta means hidden. So sometimes, in different ways, devotees hide their love. Sometimes they exhibit their love. But in the stage of Prema, Bhuti is fully operative. And preliminary, we've been discussing this, preliminary stages, Bhuti can also be, has to be, Active, where you're discriminating between what is to be done, what is not to be done, what is going to take you to Krishna, what is not. Whatever stage you may be in. Some discrimination. And that discrimination power, 
Krishna says, it comes from him. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Mataksmatir Gyanam Apohanam Remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness comes from him. Sarva Shacham Riddhi Sani Vishnu. I'm situated in the heart. That's Paramatma. He's giving us our karma. He's, he knows perfectly our attraction for guna. He's orchestrating everything in reciprocation with the living entity's disposition, which is the culmination of years, lifetimes, unlimited numbers of moments, of lifetimes of being involved in matter and trying to be the enjoyers of matter. And then along comes a devotee. And the devotee is compassionate. And the devotee wants to give Krishna to such a person. So that's, all, that's happened with each one of us. Otherwise, we wouldn't even have begun bhakti. Someone carrying bhakti gave us the opportunity to say yes to Krishna instead of no. Then from that devotee we hear about, keep it simple, Krishna's glories. We were all doing something else in the spiritual side before we came in contact with Krishna Bhakti. Some may have been very fortunate and since their childhood or birth been engaged in Krishna Bhakti, but for most of the rest of us, something. And then Krishna Bhakti is introduced because Krishna Bhakti and Krishna, it's his internal potency and himself. They're not different. So we, Friday evening, we discussed the advanced stage where in the advanced stage, Krishna sees that one has full conviction in the, the process of hearing of enchanting Shravanam Kirtan, beginning parts of the nine stages of bhakti, full faith. Not yet fully pure, but full faith. And then they carry on. <clears throat> and when Krishna sees that that is consistently done in a sustained fashion, then Increasingly, he gives the intelligence, buddhi, by which we can come to him. That was Friday. Then this morning we heard <coughs> about the, uh, the description that Kapila Dev gives to Devahuti about the requirements to come to that stage. We heard some nice descriptions. Again, emphasis on the hearing process. It's very simple. Knowledge is transmitted by hearing. It happens in schools and it happens in life and it happens in universities. It happens in spiritual knowledge also through hearing, just as we're doing. But it's not just the information and hearing and getting gyan. It's more than that, far more than that. It's their spiritual potencies in these messages and they bring transformation. So the same topic is discussed <coughs> in the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavat, where before Krishna's departure, he speaks to Uddhava, Uddhava Gita, like Bhagavad Gita. This is Uddhava Gita. Krishna speaking. Uddhava is there, also listening by providential arrangement as Maitreya, an elderly great sage who is not on the same spiritual platform as Uddhava. Uddhava's minister, 
unto Krishna. But um, he's not a learned sage. Maitreya is a learned sage, but Uddhava is even more spiritually elevated. So Krishna is explaining. I'm going to discuss two verses from chapter 20. Canto 11, in the so Uddhava Gita, where it says that bhakti surpasses knowledge and detachment. Quiz question. Don't blurt it out, just raise your hand. What is the verse in Canto 1, Chapter 2, where Krishna describes that knowledge and detachment arise causelessly from devotional service to Krishna. I see one hand. Who knows the verse? I see another hand. Shatrupa is being prompted to raise her hand. She knows the verse. Few people know the verse. Let us chant it responsibly. Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojataha Janiyati Ashu Vairagyam Jnanam Chayad Ahai to come Vairagya means detachment. Jnana means knowledge, and ahai to come means without hetu or without cause, they arise. They arise in the heart of one who engages in this, bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga unto whom? Bhakti yoga unto Krishna. Vasudeva, that's Krishna. The translation reads, by rendering devotional service unto the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, one immediately acquires causeless knowledge and detachment from the world. Ashu, very quickly, Prabhupada is, this is Prabhupada's language, immediately. Well, how immediately is immediately? How much knowledge and detachment do we have? Or, <coughs> as I said in the morning, there's the beginning stage, and then there's the advanced stage, and then there's in between the beginning and the advanced stage. So, in the beginning, some knowledge and some detachment awaken. Largely, it has to do with how spiritually advanced we were in our previous lives, and you resume very quickly to that position, where you were in your previous life. Have you noticed? I've noticed. When devotees begin devotional service, in the beginning, there's, mm, very quickly. And then... Some others go higher, some others don't go that high. It, to me it means they just continuing where they left off in their previous life. Some children are born in devotee families and they're most fortunate. They don't have to go through some years of ignorance. <laughs> But then there's this plateau or you hit this, your head hits the ceiling and that's it. And then it's a you know, struggle again. And the struggle is with antakarana. So we heard this morning. The, um, the subtle body, antha, within. Bahir, Shingo, 
Vidaye Nishingo. Anta means within. The, in, the, 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 the forces that are uh, acting, even are refined and trying to focus our intelligence on spiritual activity. There's, there's, there's obstacles. The, the, there's anartas, there's unwanted things going on. So in that intermediate stage, there's, these, there's two verses from this section where buddhi is operating, but it's not at the prema stage of buddhi yet because of these interferences. That's what I wanted to discuss. How to work your way through that intermediate stage. Where uh, in this discussion, in this chapter 20, <coughs> devotional service is described and there's a place Text 20, where the, the, the stage comes where one has faith, strong faith, in the hearing process. Strong, that's, you know, relative. How strong is strong? How does, do you get a 5, or it has to be an 8, or it has to be a 10, or... It's strong, strong, strong faith in the hearing and chanting process. And that means that one does, strong faith is evidenced by when you do, you regularly, you go to those activities, you take up those activities, you have discretionary time, and that's what you do because you have strong faith. You don't, you don't mention the other things that you might do if you don't have that strong faith. You have that strong faith and you do those things regularly, just attracted to them and having faith in them, this is going to be good. It'll help my spiritual progress, and I want to be closer to Krishna. So that's already a given. And then, as we heard this morning, by the process of hearing, and the process of self-examination, there's residual tendencies. Now, residual tendencies, it's discussed in 11, excuse me, chapter 10, Bhagavad Gita, text 11. And the residual tendencies message there is Krishna removes it personally, personally. With the shining lamp of knowledge, I destroy the darkness born of ignorance. But... That's kind of fast motion. This is section is slow motion. It's describing how that happens. It's how Krishna destroys as he gives intelligence to the devotee how to how to continue to direct their activities of devotion upon the object Krishna, even when these other things are pushing and pulling. Sometimes lesser, sometimes greater sometimes somewhere in between, but because of strong faith, I continue. And because of that strong faith, continuing, Krishna removes the, res the residual tendencies. That's how it works, the, the shining up of knowledge. It takes one beyond theoretical knowledge to the point of realized knowledge to the point of being fixed. I hope you understand what I'm trying to do here. To help go from where we are to where we want to be. So here's the verse. <coughs> 27, 28. Um, so they, they, so they, that's a given. There's faith. Shraddha. In Mat Katasu, that's Krishna speaking to Uddhava, he's Mat, that my, ta my topic is about me. And this word, Nirvina Sarva Karma so Nirvina, they have this realization that 
karma leads to misery. As they say these days, been there, done that. We learn the hard way. <coughs> the karma means life of sense gratification. Where I do things because I think if I do these things, it's going to make me happy or it's going to get me some facility so I can have some things and that's going to make me happy. And Been there, done that. Nirvana, detachment. It's, it, the, the, the translation is stronger, disgust. Detachment or disgust in either way. I don't want to, I don't, I want to not continue in that way. Veda, dukat akan kaman. So I'll read the translation. Prabhupada's, or BBT translation. <coughs> Having awakened faith in the narration of my glories, being disgusted with all material activities, knowing that all sense gratification leads to misery, but still being unable to renounce all sense enjoyment, what to do? This in-between stage. So this is how Bodhi operates in that in-between stage. My devotee should remain happy and worship me with great faith and conviction, even though he is sometimes engaged in sense enjoyment. My devotee knows that all sense gratification leads to a miserable result, and he sincerely, sincerely repents such activities. There's a <coughs> similar message in Bhagavad Gita, 930 and 931, Bhagavad Gita. Apichet su duracharo bhajate mam ananya bhak sadoreva samantavya, that verse. The durachar means bad behavior, something that is not to be done, and sometimes a devotee may do something that's not to be done. They don't deliberately do something not to be done, thinking, no problem. I'm a devotee, and Krishna is a good janitor. He can clean up my mess after I do something that's not to be done. He'll make everything clean and nice. Not with that idea in mind not deliberately do something, but due, due to weakness or due to this dosha, this area that we're not so strong in, I'm strong over here and not so strong over there. I don't become complacent and think it's okay. I, I The intelligence then says, it's not okay. And I'm going to continue now and tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day. And I've been trying for consistently for some period of time to overcome this dosha, or this weakness, or this area where, although I'm disgusted with fruitive activities, and I know that the nature of fruitive activities leads to sense enjoyment, it sense enjoyment brings misery. I know all those things. Still there's this weakness. Or the tendency is very strong in a certain area. So 
So <clears throat> what not to do is lament. And that's, you know, paragraphs, three paragraphs that speak about don't yield to the mode of ignorance and feel bad about yourself and beat yourself up and I'm I'm a bad devotee and all of those things that put you at the center, takes Krishna out of the picture altogether and doesn't do any benefit for anybody, yourself or anybody else. Certainly not the situation. But the, rather there's the acknowledgement that the, the, the byproduct of that weakness is exactly as the, the translation says. All sense gratification leads to a miserable result. And he sincerely repents all such activities. But that happens in the in this intermediate stage. In the in the <clears throat> in the language of Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's commentary, he's very specific. This is in the Anarchanavriti stage before it comes to the Nishta. In the Nishta stage, there there whatever anarthas remain or unwanted things in the heart remain, they're practically destroyed. Another quiz question. Where's that verse in the Bhagavatam where Krishna says such impurities of heart by the bhakti process are practically destroyed to nil? Nashta prayeshu abhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama shloke bhaktir bhavati naistaki. That verse is describing the nishta. For those of you who are not familiar, there's it's an intermediate phase where by devotional practice, the byproduct of devotional practice is things that are in the heart that are blocking my connection with Krishna. They're diminished. Diminished almost to nil. And then or beyond nil, to, to nil. So in that transition stage, there's still some things. But bhakti is so strong, they can't act. They can't exert. In normal circumstances, they can't. But before that nishta stage is there, they may rule. Not all the time, and certainly not deliberately, but they may sometimes prevail. And then we feel regret. We regret, we regret that that tendency is there. But it's, it's there. To know what to do. This, this verse is describing what to do. You, with faith, in the bhakti process, you go on, <coughs> guided by buddhi, the spiritual intelligence that says... This will take me to the other side of material existence. It will take me to the nishta, ruchi, asakti, the, the higher stages of bhakti. So I'm going to stay in this hearing and chanting activity. And going back to the verse that we read this morning, following the advice of Kapila Dev, look inside. While we're engaged in that hearing and chanting process, look inside and see... Where is their quality? Where is their strength? Where is their weakness? And overcome the weakness, Vishwanath says, by, the, by worshipping the devotees. And not just coming to the kirtan and not, not just hanging out, but being engaged in a serious devotional way in the relationship with those devotees that are elevated souls and trying sincerely to heed their advice to please them be you know nityam bhagavata sevaya 
Dashtaprayeshu Abhadreshu Ityam Bhagavata Sevaya by serving the the persons who are Bhagavatas. They're fixed in the message of Bhagavan. That's their life. Let me serve those persons. That's how those weaknesses can be given up. Say the opposite. If I feel, oh, I have these weaknesses, I better not get in the association of those persons because I'm too contaminated. I, you know, something. That's Maya. <coughs> Keeping you away from the means of purification. And you fell for it. Don't fall for it. Stay fixed in that association and, and service to those souls. That's why Krishna sends those souls into this world. And he gives them the spiritual potency to help us get out of that mamamaya durachyaya struggle with maya. It's Krishna's arrangement to carry you beyond that struggle. And the other things that we heard this morning. Ultimately, 1111 says it very succinctly. Krishna personally destroys. He says, jnana dipena. Aham jnana jamtama. Jnana dipena basvata. The darkness born of ignorance. That darkness is what it's like when you turn your back to Krishna. Tama. Very dark. Very fearful. Just like the verse that I quoted that made me ask Bhuja offering. Bhayam Dutiyam Abhinivesh Takshat. We you, that darkness is a place of it's fearful. You become attached. You gotta be attached to something. If you get attached to something that's Dutiyam, you name it, something that's other than Krishna, whatever your favorite something is. Get attached to that something other than Krishna. Darkness. It's fearful. Therefore, <coughs> stay in contact with light and stay in contact with the book Bhagavat and the person Bhagavat and the holy name and those things that were mentioned. Stay in a humble mood don't be driven by pretense or crookedness or false ego or wanting attention and things that just displace Krishna from the picture. That just prolongs the darkness. Doesn't bring happiness. It doesn't bring relief. It's it's Maya cheating you. this discussion with one devotee. Prabhupada said, you become a devotee, you declare war on Maya. So when you declare war on Maya, you better be ready for, for war. But you so mean it. And stay with Krishna, and wherever there's Arjuna and Krishna, there's sure to be victory, even if Maya's on the other side. Because Krishna is stronger. Krishna will carry you to the other side of whatever the weakness is, whatever the dosha is, whatever the imperfection is, whatever the narta is, whatever it is. So this verse is, is, is saying Continue with the bhakti process. Now, how, how do you regard those other things? You want to see them dissipate. They will. I have faith in the means to dissipate them. For the time being, they're not fully gone. 
And I'm not going to just look the other way or tuck them under the rug or lie to myself or lie to other people. I'm going to be straightforward and honest and simple and say, this is there and I need Krishna's mercy to help get on the other side of this something. And Krishna will help. Far more if one holds that openness of regard for Krishna than the concealing behavior. Like the nice pastime, I'm thinking of the pastime, Sudama. <coughs> he was so ashamed of what he had to offer to Krishna, this little bag of broken rice, flat rice. He had it hidden behind his back. Because what I have to offer Krishna is so insignificant. Krishna snatched it from him and started eating it. Very similar. <laughs> Shuklambar Brahmachari Mahaprabhu did the same. Or with Raghunath Das Goswami. Oh, Raghunath, you're having a feast. You're not inviting me. Let me see what you're eating. And he snatched some of the rice that even the, the cows wouldn't eat because it was spoiled rotten. Then he washed the rotten part and just the hard core of the rice inside was left and that was his feast. Mahaprabhu snatched it, started eating it. Raghunath said, don't, my lord, it's not fit for you. This is the most delicious prasadam I've ever had. So whatever it is, however insignificant it may be, you offer with love. That's the, that's the bhakti principle. And then bhūti will guide that through this you know, difficult territory of we're not there yet. We have faith in the means to get there. We're not there yet. How, do we, how does the intelligence guide our activity in that territory? There's a last. There's a similar message from uh, yeah, from Bhakti uh, Bhakti Sandarbha. Bhakti Sandarbha is a portion of <coughs> Jiva Goswami's writings. It's the longest of the Sandarbhas describing the process of Bhakti. And there's a section where he describes, <clears throat> similar to this, the, the detachment <coughs> that is experienced when one becomes spiritually advanced. And the detachment for a non-devotee and the detachment for a devotee are very different. In this intermediate stage, the cultivation of reaching towards the higher stage. In the intermediate stage for the bhakta, here's what Jiva Goswami writes, 217 Bhakti Sandarva. Those desiring bhakti offer the unwholesome actions thinking, may the Lord who is full of compassion be merciful. By seeing the suffering I undergo, due to my wicked desires. Now it's not saying, hey, it's okay, I'm a devotee. You know, it, 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 there's keen awareness of what the goal is and where I am in relation to the goal. I'm not there yet. There's some unwholesome residual tendencies lingering. I'm not there yet. I'm not at the nishta stage. <clears throat> the verses that follow the ones I showed you very quickly, then Krishna takes Uddhava into it, specifically, into the Nishta, Asapra, Ruchi, and um, Asakti stages of Bhakti. So this in intermediate stage, is, it's kind of slippery, and it's longer in duration. 
And we have to be very conscious and deliberate when we're executing that this particular phase of bhakti. So we stay on course. Krishna will help, but Krishna is also not going to interfere if we don't try. And if we try, Krishna will help. He sends devotees, he sends his messages, he sends his messengers. He taps us on the shoulder when we're heading for the ditch. Hey, you're heading for the ditch, look out. And we shouldn't say, oh, leave me alone. What do you, don't tap me on the shoulder, what's wrong with you? We'll end up in the ditch. We'll respond to those indicators that Krishna gives to help. That's puni through, and it can be come, come through other personalities that are helping to guide us. Don't be too much attached to your independence. It's not done well for you. <laughs> be dependent upon Krishna and the resources that Krishna provides. Okay. That's our topic for this evening. <coughs> Any discussion? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you very much for this topic. Um, Where to begin? My heart was racing. Should we come back? <coughs> You're going to be okay? Yeah. Okay. For the last few weeks, I've been uh, really thinking about, um, I've been really wanting to revamp my sadhana. And uh, I've noticed that, I, uh, you, as you pointed out, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's comment about <coughs> the only way that we can get over this is, uh, I forget the exact language you use, but through uh, appreciating devotees and, hear, and taking association of devotees. <coughs> and I feel that I can count on maybe one hand the, the, amount, the number of devotees that I'm truly inspired to hear from and take uh, deep association from and guidance from. And so I feel that maybe that's a problem because I'm not so inspired to to hear from immediate devotees. Well, have you heard the name Sohotra Swami? He's an American disciple of Srila Prabhupada. He served with the library party for years and then after the library party with Satsuma Maharaj because he's like a scholarly person he um, took sannyas and ended up preaching in mainly Germany opened up centers in Germany and worked with Hari Kesh for years he's written many books he's like you know scholarly devotee Remember one discussion I had with him? He said, if, if you have, in your life, if you have even one person that you consider a very dear friend and you can, with full confidence and trust, it, share anything, everything with that person and not feel judged and not feel manipulated or but feel you're being guided by wisdom and affection, you're very fortunate. So, you're not alone. I don't th think, you know, the, 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 in terms of intimacy of, of guidance, that's different than if, you know, I just don't feel inspired to hear from uh, other than a handful of people. 
that's different than the intimate guidance in, in my personal life. Say it the other way. It can be very confusing if you have m multiple people that are giving you intimate guidance in your personal life because they'll have different perspective on so many things and one may get confused. Hearing intimate guidance from so many different perspectives and then I have to kind of eeny meeny miny mo. I have to kind of select. But hearing it's, it's, a, it's a principle. As Govinda Charan was saying, some of us live by principle. And the principle of hearing Krishna Kata from varieties of persons in principle is it's, it's wonderful. It's a little bit like not the same, but it's a little bit like <coughs> um, it's, it's an element of what Rajiv likes to do when he's given a, an assignment for some time is to have discussion more than lecture. But that, that is because we learn a lot from hearing from others and the relationships become stronger when we hear from others. If we don't hear from others, then we, you know, we're just living our own autobiography. When the, the walls of the four walls of our mind, we're not seeing others, and what others are feeling, because they have feelings too. And you know, we're part of a, we're, we're social beings by nature. So I, I, I may have my affinity for certain persons and very, very confidential relationship with a small number of other persons, but being in the association when I'm hearing with appreciation the perspectives of different persons. Because that's the world that we live in. Otherwise my world gets really small. Mind. And Krishna... <coughs> and... Krishna empowers different persons in different ways. <coughs> some this, some that, and getting the variety of ways in which Krishna empowers people, even in terms of speaking. There's different speakers, and they speak in different ways, and they're gifted by Krishna to speak in different ways, and it's wonderful. It's just part of the unlimitedness of Krishna being manifest through someone. I mean, that's the spiritual world. There's, there's, there's gopis and then there's left-wing gopis and right-wing gopis and then there's groups of them. And then there's groups, there's subgroups. And, you know, the, the variety is unlimited. It's the nature of the spiritual world. We may have our closest intimate friends and then... So, we practice here what's the spiritual reality. It's something, something like what one of the offerings said today that Prabhupada, it was Yusodananda, I think. Krishna Prabhupada often spoke about Guru as one. Although there's, there's different manifestations, different, certainly different personalities, but Guru is one because Guru Tattva is one because the message of Krishna is one. And some will manifest it this way, that way. So there's diversity personality wise, but Guru Tattva, the principle, is one. And how can I be in Krishna's presence if I'm respectful over here and less respectful over there for, for persons who are dear to Krishna? I, you know, I may have a like it. Anyway, you get the idea. Krishna comes through others also. So 
keep um, keep on with the project of whatever the verb you use, re revitalizing or restructuring or reinvigorating. And then look at that option also. Certainly, we want to hear from our founder, Acharya, because anybody that has anything is going to offer us <coughs> spiritual blessings. It's from our founder, Acharya, and others manifest aspects of that. My voice is going. <coughs> Anything else? So two weeks back, like in the Anartha Nivriti class, you have mentioned that among the nine process of devotional service, uh, devotees may be good in one of the process or some of the process and may not be good in some other, but they can use the strength they gained in doing this service in the other, like into the other services. Like uh, how to do it in the practical way, like uh, using our service to do chanting better. Like uh, uh, now, like I cannot able to chant better. I cannot hear better. Or uh, in the Mangala Arti, I cannot concentrate on uh, the singing or the whatever prayers we are doing to the Guru. So how can we use this strength in uh, chanting better and uh, praying better? Two things. <coughs> what you said is not exactly what I said. What you said that I said is not exactly what I said. It's nice, but it's not what I said. Second thing is, um, what, what I said was, I said it here too, which is, there are strengths. Each Krishna has given each one of us something, a gift or gifts. I can think of some, you know, some people like cooking. They derive happiness and strength of cooking. It's not one of the nine processes of bhakti, but it's... Or some people sing very nicely. They just love singing. They love kirtan. That's nice. That's one of the nine processes. Or some persons really like deity worship. It's one of the nine process. Somebody likes just serving the devotees. This is described by Jiva Goswami in the Sandarbhas. They just like serving. It gives them strength and happiness. So do that, or do that, or do that. And do it so nicely that Krishna smiles. That's my goal. I let Krishna to smile with the cooking or the singing or the deity worship or the serving others. Not me. Or I get recognition from, oh, you can sing very nicely or you can cook very nicely and I feel. There's an intelligent person. They know that I can do these things. Not like that. Not inflate or pride or ego, but pleasing Krishna. So that's where the strength. And then there's some the other areas, like you just described, in some other area, chanting or Mangalarti Kirtan or something. When you develop strength over in that area, you'll find greater strength over in this area, where it's not so strong. That's what I meant. It just happens naturally. You don't have to put a deposit over there and then you take a withdrawal from the deposit and put it in this account. It's not so mechanical. Not a bucket thing. You put something from that bucket into this bucket. It just happens. When you have greater spiritual strength, you can apply yourself in an area where you're not so strong because you have greater spiritual strength and you'll be more effective. 
And it can be doing something you know is good for you or it can be avoiding something you know is detrimental for you. Whatever that say, supposing somebody gets angry. You have strength over here, it'll help you in that area where it's not so strong. You want a, the technology of how you move from the energy from that spot to this spot? No, you're okay. He's, I know he wants to say something more. I just want to know, like, uh, like you mentioned now, like it's a natural process, it won't happen, like we cannot make it happen, like it, it happens when it, when Krishna is pleased. No, it's not what I said. It's not what I said. You're saying something I didn't say. Like, you got, you know, your hearing needs to improve for sure. Don't hear with filters, just hear what is being said. Then you'll go to the next step. <coughs> when you focus on singing, not so it's attractive and people go, wow, you sing so... But you're singing from your heart for Krishna. It's another kind of singing. Another kind of experience on the heart level. And that strength naturally carries over to other areas. Yeah. Somebody likes to read. Read. So many books. Go deeply into that teaching in such a way that your Krishna is revealing himself to you through those messages. And you feel connection with Krishna. There's strength in that. And then you go to other areas where, I don't know, you eat too much. Or something. You get, you get angry or you, you don't speak pleasingly to others. Or whatever it is. There's some weakness. Yes. Krishna will help you. You take strength from this area and into that area. I'm going to take the microphone from you. <laughs> Who's next? Jamuna Jila. Hey, Krishna Guru um, My question is regarding the practical activities. Um, practicing um, the cultivation of Krishna consciousness in a non-secular way. Um, one of the challenges that I face, um, that when it comes to direct process of devotional service, um, I'm able to maintain uh, or at least strive for that cultivation of being meditative or being conscious. But when it comes to dealing with the practical daily activities of life, I feel I become aloof and indifferent and I'm not very conscious uh, in doing and I spend hours every day doing those activities and I feel I don't feel the connection. And how do I cultivate a meditative or a prayerful mood in approaching so that I can have a connection and carry that consciousness to my daily activities? <coughs> Is this in relation to your being a mother? Mm. Any, I'm, right now my primary role is as a housewife and taking care of household activities. Yeah. So that's the hours a day pass. So your household duties. Ma'am, I want to be a little specific. Yeah. It's, I'm specifically looking at like I am not very careful in taking care of my physical space around me. And I feel I become negligent in that. Okay. Applying this principle that we've been speaking about, there's two main things. There's many things that we just, the class this morning was specific to your question. This evening class specific to your question. <coughs> this is an area of weakness and I know I need to invest some attention but it's not happening to my satisfaction because it's an area of weakness at least for this period of time so what are the areas that I feel give me strength 
there's focus. Let me do those very nicely. And then, in the association of those that are sadhu, those that are clearly on the path to Krishna, let me eagerly seek their association. Let me hear from them, just like you know, we have these gatherings for that purpose. To hear from them. To hear from them in the manner of letting those sound vibrations go into your heart, not just into your head, and tell you turn left instead of right, or something like you know, a GPS system. It's from the heart. There's potencies in those messages <coughs> that can carry us to the other side of that weakness. That's, that's part of the strength. And with faith in that, carry on in the hearing process. Taking strength from over here, and applying it over there. Little by little, little by little, little by little. You may even need, you may even need just to do a time out. It's specific, you know, the space. So just do a reset, make the space really in order, very clean. You know, not fanatically clean, but spectacularly clean and orderly. And then keep things in order. I've learned this from travel. There's this saying, there's a place for everything and everything's in its place. As soon as you're done with something, you put it back. Because if I don't do that, boy, it's chaos. And just even one item of negligence, I don't remember where I put my passport, and it's time to take an international flight, and wait a minute, where's my passport? Panic. Or it's something. So, in principle, place for everything and everything. It's mode of goodness. Keeps, make, play orderly and clean and maintain it. Like Prabhupada's explanation of a brahmana. A brahmana is known by when they enter a place, before they begin their activity, they make it clean. And when they leave, they leave it cleaner than when they started. So like the kitchen. He was using that in terms of the kitchen. The kitchen is clean. You go in and make it clean. It's already clean. You go in and make it clean. And as you're Cooking, you're cleaning, not like this is proper standard. I know some cooks, I know of a particular cook that doesn't do this. <laughs> and I won't mention their name, but I'm sure there's some people in the room who know what I'm talking about, who I'm talking about. But Prabhupada's standard, he trained the devotees that as you're, you know, it's like one hand is stirring and the other hand is cleaning. You're keeping it clean, and then when you're done, you clean. Then you come in again, and it's already clean. You clean. It's just, it's a, st it's a medical standard. So do a little time at this possible. Time out. Just get the space in order. Everything has a place. And you keep it as, when you take it out, when you're done, you put it back. Just like your child. As a mother, you probably had spent some substantial part of your day just putting things back in order that a child puts out of order. And by your standards, you'll train the child. Not like you know, force, but by example. <coughs> that disorderliness will be passed on, and orderliness will be passed on. So it's not unimportant, especially as a mother for your own peace of mind and for the training. And as a, as a teacher, as a sannyasi, guru, GBC, we have to be exemplary. But it, what standards we set, it's going to determine what followers do, what their standards are. 
So it's, a, it's an important responsibility as, as a mother. Set the right standard. Be orderly. Get yourself organized. And then maintain it. That's goodness. She gave up the microphone freely. One more question, anybody? Yes. Yes, Mara. Thank you very much. Mara Shyam. While cultivating Krishna consciousness, the first process is bhakti and then it will lead to the purification of buddhi or intelligence or it is a vice versa. First we need to purify intelligence and... <coughs> Let us not be confused. Let us get unconfused. To say there are stages, it's not you fill up this bucket and then you go over and start an empty bucket over here and you fill up that bucket and then that's full and then you go over to that bucket. Not like that. Specifically, Rupa Goswami says, the process of bhakti begins with preliminary faith. But all nine stages can be just simply describing different stages of faith. Faith, 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 faith. And then, Adavshata, Sadhu Sangha. Sadhu Sangha is needed in the beginning, in the middle, and in the end. Bhajana Kriya is the next stage. Bhajana Kriya is needed in that stage after in the association of devotees, and it continues. And so on. <coughs> so, so to say um, Krishna gives buddhi, it's not to say not until the bell rings does Krishna give buddhi. It's there from the very beginning. Just hearing about you know, you're not this body. That's the beginning. And it takes a while. Some people, even after a while, they don't get it. And it continues. There's degrees of that. And it continues. And as I, as I started, deliberately I started describing the booty that guides Radharani, Mahabhav. And there's us. There's, there's Bodhi that's operating. And then more and more and more. But specifically, unto, uh, to the degree that the 1010 is saying, <coughs> Satata yuktanam. There's consistency in that commitment to be in your relationship with Krishna, serving him with love. I'm not there yet, but I'm consistent in my efforts. I sincerely wish. And Krishna gives. It's not like he didn't give anything before and he doesn't give anything after that. It's a one-time event. It's not like that. Okay. Thank you very much for the Prabhupada Kitai.